This lesson is an introduction to advisory conditions in Sentry 1. Advisory conditions allow you to create conditions based on the result of a performance counter value, T-SQL query, WMI query, or the combination of any of those values. After installation, if you open the conditions list, you are prompted to download the advisory conditions pack. If you haven't already, I would suggest that you do that. You do have the option of enabling or disabling any of these. Additionally, we create new advisory condition packs, and when those are available, you'll be prompted to download them. You can also go to Tools and download Latest Advisory Conditions Pack to see if there are any that you haven't yet downloaded. During this introduction, we'll be learning about the pre-configured advisory conditions that come in the download pack. All of the pre-configured advisory conditions are created at the global level. Under All Targets, we'll see an item for Advisory Conditions. Advisory conditions can be created at the global level, site level, group level, and server level. The numbers in parentheses are the number of advisory conditions that were created at each level. This number does not include any inherited advisory conditions. To view the advisory conditions at any level, expand Advisory Conditions and double-click on Conditions List. The Conditions List window has four main components. The upper left contains a list of all of the advisory conditions that are available for use at the current level. Within this area, there's quite a bit of information. One thing to notice is that while the general grid view behavior of being able to sort and filter is available, the row underneath the headers allows you to search. For instance, if I wanted to see all of the conditions that had the word wait, I could type wait in the name column. The default in that row is contains, but you can click the drop down and choose any of the criteria operators. Most of the columns are self explanatory, but a couple to point out are type, which has to do with what the condition is for. For example, SQL Server could be a T-SQL query or a SQL Server performance counter. Object is the actual name of the object where it was created, and object type specifies what that object is. Global, site, group, SQL Server, etc. For all of the pre-configured advisory conditions, the publisher will be SQL Sentry LLC. You can enable or disable an advisory condition in the Enabled column, and finally, the tags can be used to sort and organize conditions. Here I can find all of the conditions that have been tagged with performance. Clicking on the ellipsis allows you to add or remove tags. At the bottom there are buttons to create and edit advisory conditions, as well as one to view the events log. We'll be discussing editing advisory conditions and the event log later in this video. We'll cover creating advisory conditions in another video. Below the conditions list, you'll see the formula used to create the selected advisory condition. If the condition has been evaluated, you will also see whether it evaluated to true or false on the last evaluation, as well as the value during that evaluation. If this is a multi-step condition, you'll see either values for each step or whether it was skipped due to the logical operator used. In the condition for low page life expectancy, the logical operator is AND, so when the first step evaluated to false, subsequent steps were skipped. Next to the list of conditions is the evaluation status pane. This shows the servers that condition had been evaluated against. You can also see the results and whether the last evaluation was scheduled or on demand. In this pane, you can also choose to evaluate the condition on one or all of the objects. The drop-down arrow next to each button gives you the option to evaluate with logging. Choosing with logging will generate an entry in the events log if the condition does not have the log to alerting action assigned to it. Below the evaluation status pane is a description of that condition. While we're here, let's look at a couple of additional items. On the toolbar, there's an icon to jump to the dashboard. This will take you to the Performance Analysis dashboard for the current timeframe. 
Selecting a specific condition and clicking on the Show Events Log button will allow you to see prior evaluations, the values at each evaluation, any notes, and whether it's been assigned to another user. In the Events Log, there is also an icon to jump to the dashboard on the toolbar. In this case, since it's a specific event, it will take you to that time on the Performance Analysis Dashboard. There's also an icon to show active events by condition. This is a list of conditions that have evaluated to true and that status hasn't changed. Now let's talk about working with the advisory conditions that came in the download pack. As far as assigning actions, inheritance, and being able to disable, override, or combine alerts at child levels, advisory conditions work much like general failsafe and audit conditions, with one exception. When you assign an action to an advisory condition, the Condition Settings tab is already filled with the formula for that condition. We'll see an example of that later in the video. There is, however, some additional flexibility to advisory conditions. You can use them as they are, but you can also adjust the thresholds. Let's look at the High CPU Advisory Condition. This looks at the Performance Counter, Windows Processor Information, Percent Processor Time, Total, and checks to see if that value is over 90. Let's say that in our environment, we would like to be alerted anytime that value is over 85. I'll select that condition and then click Edit Advisory Condition. Because this is a condition that we provided, it can't be edited, but we can make a copy and make changes there. So I'll click Yes to continue and give it the name High CPU 85%. In the Designer window, there are several options. The name should be something descriptive. The description area is rich text and can contain hyperlinks, instructions, and anything else that you feel would be helpful. This description will display if you click on any of the warning markers on the Performance Analysis Dashboard, and also when you're looking at the conditions in the Conditions pane. Default Evaluation Frequency. This is how often the condition will be evaluated once an action is assigned. The default is every 30 seconds, but if this is something that only needs to be checked once a day, then adjust the value. Trigger threshold is how long this condition needs to evaluate to true in order to raise an alert. For example, if my CPU hits 95 for two seconds, I might not want to receive an alert, but if it stays elevated for a minute, I might. One other thing to note here is if the formula is just looking for a true or false, for instance, has the value of the server max stop changed, a trigger threshold is not necessary. Severity levels have a few different uses. They help to define how a condition is weighted in the environment health score. You can use it to sort events in the event log. And additionally, if there are high or critical events, the Advisory Conditions folder in the Navigator pane will turn red. Evaluation Timeout. This is how long Sentry 1 should try to evaluate a condition before timing out. Maximum Instance Count is how many values we expect to evaluate to true. For example, if we're looking at data files with less than 10% free space, and we have 40 total database files, we would set that value to 40. The color you choose defines a duration line that shows up on the Performance Analysis Dashboard when the condition is true. It is also the color used for the advisory condition events that show up in the event calendar. The highlight on Dashboard Chart indicates where the warning marker will show up on the Performance Analysis Dashboard. Finally, the supported versions can restrict conditions from running on certain builds of Windows or SQL Server. This particular condition only has a Windows performance counter. If it had had a T-SQL query or a SQL Server performance counter, we would have also seen the minimum and maximum supported versions for SQL Server. For instance, if you're creating a condition based on functionality introduced in 2008 R2, and you still have SQL Server 2005 instances, you could enter 6.1 in the minimum field. All of those fields require build numbers. In another video, we'll talk about building advisory conditions from scratch, but here we just want to change that threshold value, and we'll change it to 85. 
Once we've done that, we'll click on the disk icon on the toolbar to save it. After saving it, you're prompted to add actions. I'll click yes, and I'm going with the send to alerting channels action. If we view our new advisory condition, you'll see in the condition settings tab that it's already set. Now one thing you can do is change the evaluation frequency. Let's say that in our dev environment, we only want to check once a minute. We'll select the dev group in the navigator pane, find the condition high CPU 85% and click override. We can then uncheck use default and change it to one minute. One final thing that you may want to do is disable the original high CPU condition if you're not using it on any other instances, and that can be done from the conditions list. Advisory conditions allow you to build alerts specific to your own monitored environment using values and metrics from multiple sources and subsystems, making Sentry One alerting both customizable and flexible.